So when I was at uni, I learned a lot about architecture, but I didn't learn as much as I really thought. It was only when I got out into the real world and started practicing as an architect that I actually started to learn a few bits and pieces. That's why today I really wanted to talk about the in-depth focus of roof construction. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk all things architecture and technology. If that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button because today we're talking about Archicad 24 and roof construction. So there are a lot of things I didn't know as a grad and there were definitely a lot more things that I didn't know when I actually entered the real world of architecture and practice. Now, today I wanted to talk to you guys exactly how roof construction works, what the different elements are, and what you should know when you're documenting on Archicad 24. If you are struggling with construction documentation, there is a link down below to a construction checklist that I personally use myself and design myself for you guys to be able to help you out. And as always, there's also another link just below for all of these awesome cut shirts. Now, let's jump into today's tutorial and turn around to these screens. Okay, so on the right-hand side of my screen, I've got Archicad 24 open, and I've gone ahead and modeled a very basic house. There is nothing to it, it's a couple walls and a roof structure. But what I wanna talk about is that roof structure in itself on top because what may seem like a very simple roof construction of a hip and valley roof is actually a lot more complicated than you might think. On the left hand side of my screen, which I'll drag to the right, is a twin motion render of that exact same project. Now I'm gonna use both the ArcCAD and the twin motion files just to give it a bit of variation and show you a bit of a nicer graphics along the process. So if we jump back to ArcCAD 24, straight away you'll see that I have a hip and valley roof structure on top of my brick walls. Now in ArcCAD 24, you can simply construct any roof structure by going to the roof tool, selecting the hip and valley geometry, and then just tracing around the actual walls that you need to construct. There are a number of different elements going on in this very simple image in front of us. For example, at the front of this house, we have what's called a gable roof. It's the difference between this flat edge here of the roof and this gable end. On the exact opposite, we have something completely different. We have a gable that is flush with a brick wall against it. So at the front, you'll see that with this gable roof, we have what is called a barge fascia. So at the front of this roof, you're gonna see what we call a gable barge. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see this little board here that goes all the way along the front, and that's what we depict as a barge board. Now, if we were to open up the settings and being able to change each individual roof edge, this is CI Tools roof covering. So if you do want to download and install that, you can. It is an added expense to Arcad 24, but I found it phenomenal. You can see at the front here, we have our gable barge, which is looking at this edge here. Now, if we were to change that to a gutter and go OK, we would see that no gutter is actually created and all it does is take away our barge board at the front. So if we were to open up that setting again, we can also have the apron option, which you'll see takes away the front barge completely and leaves us with a flashing that wraps up at 90 degrees. I'll go into the apron option a little bit further on the other side of the roof to explain why that's important. But on this side of the roof, we are going to be using a barge board. Now, if you're thinking, when do I need to use a gutter? When do I need to use an apron? And when do I need to use a barge? It's actually quite simple. So the barge is always going to be at the end where you can physically see it. So for example, on this side here, it's a gable so we can see the barge. If we go around, this side of the roof is exposed. So again, we have another barge. If it's exposed to the public eye, you're going to have a barge. If the roof falls down and there's an edge, you're always gonna have a gutter of some sorts. Most of the time, you can't have it just left open and falling down unless you're in a cyclone prone area but in most instances, you will need some sort of gutter or some sort of water catchment system to be able to control the water flow from the roof to the ground. And finally, there is the apron option that is allowed on these settings. And the apron option is another simple one, as long as you know the differences between them. An apron simply wraps up at a 90 degree angle most of the time, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees, against a solid surface. So that when it rains, it comes down onto this apron and then falls onto the roof. It's basically protecting this roof and this wall structure from water penetrating through, just like an apron would protect you when you spill food all over you. So that's a good way to remember when you need to use an apron 
versus when you need to use a gutter and also when you need to use a barge. Now this roof in itself is quite simple. It's a hip and valley roof like I mentioned before, but there's a number of different elements going on in this structure itself. So if we look down this line here in the center where these two roofs join and they start to fall downwards, we call that a valley. Now you may call this different terminology around the world, but in Australia, we call that a valley. And on the top right here is what we call a ridge. They're the two main structural components that you need to know of a hip and valley roof. It's simply a valley where it joins and falls and it's a ridge where it meets like a mountain. Again, these two color bond sheets here on the left and the right hand side of this gable roof would meet at a whatever angle degree this roof is. I think it's 30 degrees. And then obviously because it's a corrugated finish, you would need some sort of capping along the top to be able to protect all that water not getting in and under and then leaking into your house underneath. So now if we jump back to twin motion just to give it a bit more flair and a bit more architectural styling, we'll see that we have a render that's quite nice. It's a modern brick house with a hip and valley roof. We can see all the elements that we discussed. We can see that ridge capping, that hip capping. We can see the barge board at the front, which has been brushed with a brushed black metal finish. We can see our gutters. We can see our down pipes. And for example, our gutters aren't showing up. So this is a quick little tip. If we go out of full screen mode, open this, select our gutter material, go to settings and make it two-sided, all of a sudden we can see all of our gutter. So that's a really good and handy trick if you're stuck in twin motion and can't see those curves or any material that's undulating and changing shape. If we continue to spin around, we can see our barge board on that exposed side of the roof and going all the way to the back near our rendered wall, we can see our apron as well. So it's a very simple concept that if the water runs down, it'll fall onto that apron, off, off the apron, onto the corrugated roof and into the gutter itself. Now, the last thing that we have to pay attention in a roof construction is the actual downpipes. So the downpipes, depending on how far the roof extends, might have to bend a little bit to reach back to the wall and be fixed to the wall, or they might be able to go straight down if that roof is something of this nature where it's just flush to the edge of the brickwork. One thing that you have to keep in mind when designing is that you're going to need a downpipe everywhere you have a gutter. So as you can see on this 3D render here, we have one, two, three, four, four very visible downpipes on this facade itself, which means I couldn't have created a corner window that wrapped all the way from this wall, all the way across, returned here, and then ran all the way back. You just wouldn't physically be able to return that water anyway. Obviously, there's a series of ways that you can hide these downpipes. They can go into the cavity, they can run into the wall, they can be shifted, they can be combined, and they don't necessarily need this many, but I'm just showing this many for the purposes of argument. We have a series of these downpipes that would impeach on our facade, and it's important that we do show them in these renders so people, when they get a sense of their house, go, don't come to the final construction go, oh, that's an ugly downpipe going right through the middle of where I thought would be a beautiful brick wall. Besides from a gable roof looking a lot nicer than the edge of a hip and valley roof like this side, it also gives us the added benefit of not requiring any downpipes along the front fascia. So because we're looking at this house directly on and that would be the main facade, we don't need to see any downpipes running straight through that beautiful facade. Instead, we can hide our downpipes on the left and right hand side of that gable roof. So gable roofs aren't always an architectural desire to have them as an architectural styling. Sometimes it is a roof construction idea so we can push away those downpipes and really focus on the architecture instead of all the water management and all the nitty gritty details. Now, one thing you'll notice is that these downpipes are going directly into the ground and just falling. In Australia, what we would do is actually we would connect them to a soak well and they would run underground and disappear to a soak well somewhere far away from the house. This is because if we run our downpipes directly to the ground and let all that water just pond on the ground, eventually this house formation right under this downpipe will start to fall away, crack and break, and the foundations will become weakened. 
So what we want to do is really force that water away from the house as much as we can and that's why these downpipes go straight into the ground and disappear. You would see some sort of stormwater grate in real life but for the purpose of this we're just modeling it very simply to get the argument of roof construction across. Underneath the roof you'll see that it wraps around and has this black soffit lining. So we can completely get rid of this soffit, it could be on the rake, it could be flat depending on how we like it. If I fly into this house, you'll notice the difference between the soffit and the roof construction. So the soffit is just the lining underneath the exposed roof. Basically, it has to be some sort of water resistant material, something like fiber cement or fiber cement sheeting that can resist any water penetration going through it and we can ensure that our house stays watertight the whole time. These soffits don't necessarily have to be flat. They can be raking, like I said before, which gives you the same look as this. It, that at the end of the day is just an architectural styling and how you would like to finish off the edges. Most of the time it's just the flat soffit at the edge here where the roof passes the edge of the wall because it's a nice finish. That's not detailed correctly. It would definitely extend to the edge of this wall but we're not going into so much detail. On a gable roof it would look definitely like this. You would want to rake it. You definitely wouldn't want to box it out. It would look horrible and it would be very impractical and hard to construct. So if you do have that raking finish where it's exposed on the edges you will have that raking soffit as well. Now if you ever get confused on what all these elements are you can open up the ArchiCAD settings. So if we go into ArchiCAD select one of our roof sheeting materials and go to the roof sheeting dialog box you'll see that there is an abundance of different sections here that we can go through. So if we go from the cladding material we can see that it's showing the corrugated cladding type we have all sorts of different materials. We can have ribbed cladding, we can have uh, shingles, we can have tiles, we can have a whole bunch of different things. Colorbond is one of the most common in Australia, so we're just showing Colorbond for the purposes of this video. Then we can show our gable wall ends, we can change all these settings, we can continue to go through, we can have the finials at the top, which would be a nice little architectural feature right at the top of this gable. Uh, it shows all sorts of different framing of how that sits on the actual roof structure. I made a video about that actually last week, so if you go back and check that out, you'll see timber frame construction and how it all goes together, and that includes the roof and the purlins and the framing. We have our edge boards, which is what we were talking about here. There are barge boards, which we can adjust in settings and styles. We have our fascia boards, which is the actual board sitting underneath the barge capping. And finally, we have the barge board itself. So on that front barge, there is three multiple elements that we can adjust, and it continues to go around for the ridge board, the soffits, the flashings, and so on. So if you do ever get confused of what a single element is, you can come back into this, go through all of these, and actually learn in more detail. And that's pretty much it guys, all you need to know about roof construction, it is very simple but the terminology is very important that you understand because if you go in here and all of a sudden just don't put a gutter on there, you put a barge board, you put an apron over here and you do something like this, you're going to end up with a horrible looking roof that doesn't work and the builders are going to be thinking what kind of idiot is putting together this set of drawings, they don't know anything about construction and I'm just going to go ahead and build whatever I like. So it's pivotal that you know these very minor details, but they are very critical to you excelling in your career as an architect, as a designer, as whatever you're watching this video from, but that is the general basis of roof construction. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below, and as always, I'll see you next Monday.